Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Cassie. If it's not, thanks for always tuning into my videos. Today I have a video before a video. I decided that everyone on this channel knows that I love dragons and there's always dragon books that I want to read and so I thought why not do a video, a reading vlog, reading dragon books. But I want your help to decide the dragon books. So I've been asking my Patreon, I asked on YouTube, I've asked so many people to just tell me dragon books and this video will have 25 dragon books that look interesting to me and I need your help choosing which ones I'm gonna read. So we'll have 25 brief, hopefully brief, synopsis. Also I'm not sure I counted correctly and there could be more or less than 25. Brief little synopsis and then you will comment down below the book or multiple books that you would like to see me read and at the end of, at some point in the near future, I will be reading the top probably three to five books in a vlog. So help me choose which dragon books to read and let's get right on into it so this video is not a million years long because we have a lot of dragon books to talk about. Some of which are really up my style and some of which are not but I also wanted to just include some that were outside of my comfort zone and a couple I'm very scared about but let's get on into it. Let's start very typical, very well known with Aragon by Christopher Paolini. I haven't read Aragon yet and it's such a staple in the dragon community, I guess I'm gonna call it. One boy, one dragon, a world of adventure. I'm not really gonna describe Aragon because I feel like most people know it. I've watched the movies and I loved the movies but I never read the books and it is a young adult novel written by the target audience. Like he was quite young when he wrote it so we'll see. But if you'd like me to read Aragon, comment down below. Let's go with another big staple in the dragon literature. Prairie of an Orange Tree. Man, this book is the size of my head. I don't even fully know what Prairie of the Orange Tree is. I just know that there's dragon riders in it and that it's long and intimidating and people tend to love it. I think we follow multiple people. One is a dragon rider and the other might just be political allegiances and alliances are going on and yeah um does this need a synopsis or are you all just gonna pick it because it's chunky i feel like i have a lot on this list that aren't well known but we're starting with some well-known ones so we also have his majesty's dragons by naomi novik which is the first book of the temeraire series this one is a retelling reimagining of the uh, napoleon wars if dragons existed it's quite short and um, I have started this book before and just never finished it because timing and everything and I've heard that the dragons in it are done very well. A lot of people love it. I have read two other Naomi Novik books. I loved one, hated the other, so we'll see where this one lies if you decide to pick it. There is something about a French captain who sees his precious car cargo it ends up being an unhatched dragon egg and someone then has to bond to the dragon egg and France takes on airborne battle tactics I believe in the war. Honestly let's just keep going with ones I own. We have A Burn Red Skies by Kirsten Espinosa Rosero which is a indie self-pubbed fantasy. This one I believe we are following a girl who is forced into hiding when someone comes and kills her entire village and she starts to train to um, she begins training in the elements with only one goal in mind to find her brother but in order to get to her brother she has to go past the summoner's army where there is a dragon and she'll have to slay the dragon but the thing is the dragon's already been killed so how do you kill a dragon that's already dead this one sounds really cool and interesting to me and I believe this is also young adult, borderlining adult. Then we have Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This comes heavily suggested, recommended by Maria and Emma. And this one we're following two childhood friends who, one is Annie who was born to a low-born family that was executed by Dragonfire and Lee who was born to the Aristocats who used to rule the city but they both ended up at the same orphanage and kind of grew up as friends and started training together and they're now rivals for the top position in the dragon riding fleet and everything changes when survivors from the old regime surface bent on reclaiming their city. Lee must choose to kill the only family he has left or, 
or to betray everything he's come to believe in, and Annie must decide whether to protect her dearest friend or step up to be the champion her city needs. Loyalty and love are tested in this gripping adventure that asks what matters most, the family you were born into or the one you've chosen? This one sounds good. They all sound good. There's dragons in them. I really do like this cover. It's really pretty. And this one is a young adult read. Another chunker is Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. This is another indie self-pubbed book. This one has gotten some hype in the self-publishing world. This book also has disability rep in it, I believe. We are following a ram who has a, think, misfit orphan boy, small fishing village who somehow has this, like, really impressive magic. He ends up at the Academy for Dragon Mages or whatever they're called, and he has such... He starts to train within them, and he'll have to fight to be respected for by everyone, and he, the world needs a dragon rider and a champion, and will Aram be that person? I'm really interested in this one. I do love a good school setting, and I believe we have a lot of training in the academy in this one, but it's a chunker, and um, it also has some disability rep, which is something you don't see very often, and in like high epic fantasy. I don't know. I'm really excited for this one. Ooh, look at that cover. Look at that art. That's just artwork in the book. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for this one. Is there more artwork? Me just flipping through now. So yeah, you can pick this one, which gives me classic fantasy chosen one mage dragons vibes. Okay, and that was the last of the ones I like physically own at this moment in time, but let's get on into the rest. Next we have The Bonding by Vicky Nistot and Danny Nistot. This is the Dragoneer number one. I believe this is a YA book. We are following our character Tristan who has a special bond with dragons, but with her father crippled and his dragon mortally wounded, she has to figure out if that bond will be enough to save the dragons in the village. Tristan has wished all of her life to follow in her father's footsteps and lead the dragons of Arona into battle but history says that a male has to be the leader, and so she fights to prove herself to her father, to the village, to the dragons, that she can be the leader that they need. It's a coming-of-age story featuring strong women, hope, and a compelling storytelling style appropriate for most ages. Yes, it's 100% YA, could lean a little bit more middle grade, I'm thinking. Which, if you know me, I don't love YA, so I'm a little nervous about this one. But also, I like the idea of, like, her fighting for her place. Because as women, we all know. We all know. Now, another one that I think could be YA, but I'm not entirely sure it could lean more adult this time, is Rebel Dragon by Steve Turnbull. This is the Dragons of Asterns, number one. This one does sound really good. It is, what value is freedom when you can't even ride a dragon? Um, we follow Cantese, who is a slave, but she doesn't have it too bad because she is a slave that races dragons. Um, being responsible for a racing dragon means her existence is more than just drudgery and fear, even if her life is at the whim of her masters and the rules. But when her dragon wakes her in the middle of the night, she has to make a life or death decision, and it goes against all of her master's rules, but she escapes with a hodgepodge group of people on the back of a dragon to attempt to fix a wrong that can never be fixed. It says, the first book in the Dragons of Asterns epic fantasy series. I love epic. <laughs> epic is great. Then we have the Dragon Champion by E.E. E. Knight, which is Age of Fire number one. Now this is a different type of dragon story because our POV is a dragon and that's pretty much all I know about it. Orin, a rare gray dragon, escapes those who kill his siblings. Armed only with his claws, determined to survive, he searches for his kind. He faces killers, dwarfs, elves, humans, and other dangers. Orin does find allies in strange places and himself along the way. Now, this one is for sure young adult, but with the POV being a dragon, I couldn't not include it in this video. Now, one I'm really terrified to put on this list is Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. I want to try Terry Pratchett, but I think I'm going to hate Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett has a comedic term of writing. He writes satire more than anything, but Guards Guards has comedic little dragons in it, and 
I don't know. I felt like if I were to like any Terry Pratchett, it would probably be the one that has dragons in it. So it's on this list. I'm going to read the synopsis to you because, yeah. This is where the dragons went. They lie, not dead, not asleep, but dormant. And although the space they occupy isn't like normal space, nevertheless, they are packed in tightly. They could put you in a mind of a can of sardines if you thought sardines were huge and scaly. And presumably, somewhere, there's a key. Guards Guards is the eighth disc, or disc world novel, and after this, dragons will never be the same again. Obviously, it's the eighth disc world novel, but disc world can be read in any order, and I just don't care enough to read it in the order it came out in. I'm gonna, if I'm going to attempt it, I'm gonna attempt the one that I think I have will have the best enjoyment with first. Then we have Serafina by Rachel Hartman. This is a young adult where we are following a murder mystery. Someone was murdered by a dragon and our protagonist was supposed to marry this person I believe but she is trying to figure out who killed them but also hiding the secret that she also is a dragon and it's like dragon shapeshifters I believe. I don't know. Here we are. This one is a little bit more well known I believe so some people might know it. And then we have Dragon Reach by J.A. Andrews. This is another indie self-pubbed book. This one we are following our main character Sable who can tell if someone's who has the power to be able to tell if someone is telling the truth and she's been using it all of her life to try and escape the gang boss that has control of her. Escape comes from an odd set of companions. There's a bunch of companions listed here but I won't list them but her freedom is short-lived because on the edge of civilization they find something that can bring the whole emperor tearing down and she ends up having to go back and trying to save everything that she knew. This is the first book in a tale of how an orphan thief escapes the slums, united a nation, and brought a mighty empire to its knees. Sounds really good. I'm really intrigued by this one. I own it Kindle Unlimited-wise. I don't actually own a copy of it, but I have been very excited. This was on my self-pub TBR, I believe. And then we have The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan, which is the Draconis Memoria number one. This one is a... I, I think Rachel told me it's a little steampunky. We are following a world where they harness the blood of dragons to have power and then use that power, but little do they know the line of the dragon power is kind of fading and stuff happens and stuff just gets really intense and I don't know. I haven't tried Anthony Ryan yet, but he's an author I really, really, really want to try. I do own The Pariah by him and this one sounds really interesting or really cool. I feel like it's a different take on dragons considering the steampunky vibes to it and I really like this cover. And then we have Dragon Prince by Melanie Ron, which is Dragon Prince number one. This is a story where we follow Rohan became the new prince of the desert, which I love a desert fantasy. Ruler of a kingdom granted to his family for as long as the long sand spewed fire. He took the crown with two goals in mind. First and foremost, he sought to bring permanent peace to his world or divided princedoms. And in a land where dragon slaying was a proof of manhood, Rohan was the sole champion of the dragons, fighting desperately to preserve the last remaining lords of the sky and with them a secret which might be the salvation of his people. And then there is Sion, the Sunrunner Witch, who was fated by fire to be Rohan's bride. She's mastered the magic of sunlight and moon glow, catching hints of a yet-to-be-formed pattern which could irrevocably affect the destinies of sunrunners and ordinary mortals alike. And then there's some kind of treachery happening. But I love the idea of this magic system, and I like the idea that he's, like, trying to protect the dragons where everyone else is trying to kill them. A vibe. A mood. Um, I'm also really excited to try this one, Adult High Fantasy. Sounds intriguing. And then we have Blue Moon Rising by by Simon R. Green, which is Forest Kingdoms number one. This one sounds really good. We're following Rupert, who did not want to be prince, and he did not ask to be the second son of a royal line. They did. <laughs> the description literally says, and he certainly never asked to be the second son of a royal line. That really didn't need a spare. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. So he sent out to slay a dragon and prove himself. A quest straight out of Legends, but Rupert soon finds that Legends tend to miss out on things and don't actually tell the full story. He does find a fiery dragon and a beautiful princess to rescue, but the dragon turned out to be a better friend than anyone back at the castle. And with the evil of Darkwood spreading, Rupert was going to need all the friends he could get. This sounds fun. 
Um, it sounds like it's going to have a little bit of humor to the writing, and I kind of think that that sounds entertaining and interesting and, you know, with such a classic trope of dragons, I love when someone just alters it just a little bit. Like, I want to see the classic dragon love, but I want it to be a little different. And then we have The Adamantine Palace by Stefan Diaz, which is the Memory of Flames number one. I will say, I think I originally was looking at like the fifth book in the series and I was like, oh, that sounds good. Um, and I went back to the first book and was like, oh, we should start here. This is, uh, the synopsis is really short. One man wants to rule the wealthy empire. He is ready to poison the king, as did his father, murder his lover, and bed her daughter. Is he fit to be king? Unknown to him, a dragon is on the loose. Return to full intelligence and fury, it could wreak havoc. Also, actions of an unscrupulous mercenary may lose hundreds of dragons. This is short and sweet, but like, gets to the point, and, and now I need to know and read more. So, yeah, that's it. I'm ready. I'm just ready. Then we have Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton, and Tooth and Claw just reminds me of a political fantasy. We are just dealing with like family deaths, the death of the father, a son goes to court for his, his inheritance, another son agonizes over his father's deathbed, one daughter becomes involved in the abolition movement, which another sacrifices herself for her husband. But the thing is, all of these characters are dragons, I believe, and so we're following dragon politics in a dragon family. Sounds interesting, sounds unique. I would say that this one, when I actually like read the synopsis, is one of my least favorite synopsis because I think it's going to be a little bit more just like a slice of life. But the concept of them all being dragons is really cool. And then we have Of Cinder and Bone by Kyoko M. And all I gotta say is this is Jurassic Park but dragons. Essentially we're following a world where dragons went extinct, someone finds out the way to bring them back, brings them back, and they escape! Literally, science, Jurassic Park, dragons. Sounds cool. And I believe it happens in Japan, if I am correct. Then we have Blood of an Empire by Brian Nasland, which is Dragons of Terra number one. We follow our main character, Burshad, who used to be a legendary dragon slayer lord of some kind of place, but after a disastrous failure, he was stripped of his titles and sentenced to one violent perilous hunt after another. Now he only lives to stalk dragons, kill them, and take their precious oils, but but the king who sentenced him ends up giving him a chance at redemption, kill a foreign emperor, and walk free forever. The journey will take him across dragon-infested mountains, through a seedy criminal un underworld, and into a forbidden city guarded by deadly technology. But the links of fate bind us all. This one sounds so freaking good. Like, this one, so good. Like, right up my alley, alley, although I do not like this cover. Then we have The Iron Crown by L. L. McRae, which is Dragon Spirits number one. I have actually read the prequel novella to this, The Citroen Key, already, and I really enjoyed that one. This one we are following... Fen, whose first and only memory is waking up to, like, a dragon spirit, and in this world there's, like, dragons are, like, spirits, and it's, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. And something completely different, and, like, not all spirits are dragons, but all dragons are spirits. So cool. Anyways, tangent. And he... All knowledge gone from apart from his own name, and his only hope for answers is Caligra, who is a woman living on the edge of the world with her partner, and Caligra ends up for, like, um helping Fen and forging papers for him so he can avoid the Queen's Inquisitors, but they end up finding that an enemy is rising again, and Fen is terrified he might unwittingly pl be playing a part in the war's resurgence. Surrounded by vengeful spirits and powerful magic, Fen's desperate attempt to find his way home might as well alter the fate of Tassar and every power in it. And yeah, I really liked the magic system when I read about it in the prequel novella, so I am very excited to continue this and read the first book. I'm honestly not entirely sure there's actually dragons in this one, but The Dragon's Path by Daniel Abraham is our next one, which is the Dagger and the Coin series. I'm a little worried that this is going to be something like Wheel of Time, where it's like the dragon reborn, but the dragon reborn, or mentions, like, is actually a person, not a dragon, or like the Dragon Republic, which there's no dragons, it's just the Dragon Republic. So this one could be a little iffy, but mm, here we go. We're following Marcus. All paths lead to war. We're following a couple different characters. Marcus Hero's days are behind him. He knows too well that even the smallest war still means somebody's death, and he's trying to stay out of a battle um, using some unorthodox steps. 
Scytherin is an off is an orphan ward of a banking house. Her job is to smuggle a nation's wealth across a war zone, hiding the gold from both sides. But the strategies of trade will not defend her from swords. Jadar, soul skion of a noble house, has more interest in philosophy than in sword play. Poor excuse for a soldier, he's a pawn in these games. No one can predict what he will become. Falling up pebbles can start a landslide. A spat between the free cities and the severed throne is spiraling out of control. A new player rises from the depths of history, fanning the flames that will sweep the entire region onto the dragon's path, the path to war. Yeah, honestly, there could not be dragons in this one, but this one sounds really good. And it's got a dragon in its title. Like, come on, come on, give it to me. Now, I know absolutely nothing about this next one, but I know it's a classic, and I know lots of people either love it or hate it, but classic, and it's has a lot of uniqueness for dragons, I think, compared to, you know, you know, I'm just gonna stop there, which is The Book of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin, and, um, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really give you a synopsis, but it's such a classic that it's on this list. There you go. There you go. And then we have The Reborn King by Michael R. Miller, which is the Dragon's Blade number one. We have arrogant, scornful, full of pride Darner, Prince of Dragons, who cares nothing for the damage he's doing to the faltering alliances against the demonic forces of the Shadow. He thinks himself invincible right up till a mortal wound forces him to undergo a dangerous rebirthing spell, leaving him a helpless babe in human hands. Twenty years pass and demonic forces are once again posed to sweep across the land with the and with the alliance between humanity, dragons, and fairies fracturing. Darnir will have to uncover the secrets of his past, seek redemption for his sins, and rally the des rally the races if they are to survive. Only Darnir can do this, for he's the last member of the royal bloodline, and only he can wield the dragon's blade. I don't know why this one I felt like needed that kind of intensity with a synopsis, but I don't know. Sounds cool. This one sounds cool. You can vote for it down below. I also believe it's an indie book. And then we have Dragon's Bane by Barbara Hambly, which is Wint Winterlands number one. And in this one, we are following when the black dragon seizes the deep of Yferdin. Young Gareth braves the far winter lands to find John Aversin Dragonsbane, the only living man ever to slay a dragon. In return for the promise of the king to send help to the winter lands, Aversin agreed to attempt the nearly impossible feat again. And that's it, you know? And there's a bunch of politics and stuff that happen afterwards, and there's something about the dragon feeding well while they're on this quest, and, you know... They challenge the dragon eventually, but there's way bigger perils they must face. This one sounds really good, too. I think this is quite a classic. Yeah, 1987 this came out, so it is a pretty big classic. And, I don't know, I, I, I like it. It sounds cool. And then we have Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan, which is technically a prequel to a prequel series. Um, but you can read them in any order, essentially, and... As always, I, sometimes I just like to read what interests me most, and this one does interest me, so it's on this list. Ever since the time of Immorial, humans have worshipped the gods they call Free? Frey? Truly a race apart, invincible in battle, masters of magic, and seem seemingly immortal. But when a god falls to a human blade, the balance of power between humans and those they thought were gods changes forever. Now only a few stand between humankind and annihilation, wraith reluctant to embrace his destiny as the god killer, Suri, a young seer burdened by signs of impending doom, and Persephone, who must overcome personal tragedy to lead her people. The age of myth is over. The time of rebellion is here. Um, sounds really good. I believe this one has, like, a lot of the lore building of what happens in the previous series, even though technically, yeah. And dragons. There's lots of dragons in this. I know for sure there's dragons in this one which also sounds cool. Now, those are all the prequel, like, starts, like, the series standalone starts that I can read. I do have a couple that I have read the first book of that you could pick, but I'm assuming people won't. I am currently reading the Dragon Riders of Pern series, um, Dragonflight, so I could continue the series and read the second book if people were interested in the vlog for it. And I am really enjoying this series. I'm about, well, this book, I'm about halfway through. It's a classic, like, one of the first dragon books ever. And let me tell you, it's like Aragon before Aragon. Like, the original Aragon. It's really cool. I love the world building. I love the personalities and the, the lore. I'm really intrigued by it. It's really good. So I could continue and read the next one. So, yeah, I could read whatever book comes after this. Let, 
I don't even know right now. Dragon Quest, maybe, is what comes after. And then I've also read the first book in the Lady Trent series, which is the history of dragons, the natural history of dragons, which is kind of just like they are world, but with dragons. Like we're following a scientist who wants to just inspect dragons almost like you would any other animal and like learn something about them. I really enjoyed the first book. I read it a long time ago, but I never continued the series, so I could continue it. And yeah, so there's both of those ones, which don't count to the 25 that I counted, but they are there. So yeah, that brings me to the end of all the dragon books that I currently have on this TBR. So let me know down below. You can leave a comment with one book. You can leave a comment with multiple books, anything really. Um, and I'm going to attempt to tally them up somehow. You know, future Casty will find this problem. And the ones with the most votes will definitely be the ones I read. And you can look out for that vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me a dragon emoji. Like, I can't ask for anything else. And then, if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstagram, my book, Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.